this temperature, changing these battery wires, all I think about is, let me get the hell inside and have coffee. Holy mackerel, is it cold. It is really cold out here this morning. It is so cold out in the garage this morning. I just can't wait to get the hell out of here. Whoo! Am I glad I got indoor stuff today. It is in the low 20s and the wind is howling. So we can work on the uh, carbon fiber that we made yesterday. It'll be a nice indoor job, a nice way to spend the day in between drinking coffee. Now it's a part you don't really see. If you look down here, this is a muffler mount because I've used an 86 exhaust system on an 82. I had to make a pretty complex bracket with a curve in it. It's solid carbon fiber. It's structural carbon fiber, in fact. You almost don't even see it when you look at the bike, but that's a key part, and boy, was that, <laughs> that was murder to make. In my sports seat, I made that from scratch, but you know what? As I'm getting older, I like the stock seat because it's just a lot more comfortable for me. This part was a lot of work to make, a lot of work. <laughs> It doesn't look like it. If you look back over the video making that part though, holy moly. Now today we're going to try to come up with a finish. See, the thing I want to experiment with today is to try to put an epoxy finish, the epoxy that the part is made out of, as a finishing resin. And I want to see that ultimately when that dries up, if I'm going to be able to buff it out to a nice shine. Now one of the things about this restoration that we're doing this year the FCR restoration, just so much repair work to that track work, body work, and replacing things, and Bondo, and CA, and carbon fiber repairs. This year, we don't have a lot of that. So we have a lot more time to do some nice detailing stuff. And these little heel, heel guards are going to be one of the detailed parts. I'm really looking forward to seeing how they're going to come out. Now another thing, I'm trying to come up with a better way on some of the bikes, especially on the, the 650, that I, I don't have to have this part here that I can mount it from the back. But of course, that's pie in the sky right now. When it's this cold, I just want to get inside. I have a good tolerance for the cold, but not really that good. I'm not a penguin. When after that outdoor work is done, oh my god, bringing in the garbage cans and everything. I am so ready. A really nice way to enjoy the morning coffee. Well, I hope your family's having as much fun this Christmas as we are. It's been a banner Christmas season. Now, down in the shop at last, one of the nice things about leapfrogging is we always have, and we're into this restoration over a month already, about a month and a week, we always have some parts on here that are ready to be sanded, some ready to be buffed, and one I put, I have this, this great invention right here, I put up by the heating vent, and that gets it a little bit closer so that overnight it's been cooking at a relatively high temperature. That's going to be the material to make our heel pads, but if we need to fill out the day, we always have some parts to sand, to buff, to detail, and I actually have one part, I don't know where it is, I've lost the part! Oh, it's in the back. These are today's things. See, this one has a little, I went through in a corner. I want to touch that up. And another spot I went through over there, got a little too aggressive with the sanding. And what I'll do with that part, just touch it up with the black. Not right now, not when it's 26 degrees out there. We'll wait till it's above freezing, get that. And here's the, the project of the day. I want to cut out the heel pads from that material we made yesterday. See, as I think about it, this is the stuff we don't have to do on this restoration. These major, major body, body work repairs that took weeks and really took it put an extra month actually onto that FCR restoration last year. Don't have to do that this year. So now the first thing of the day is we have this piece that's been sitting up by the heating vent overnight so that it's, it's totally cured now. I want to see if that PVA, because I have tape on here, it's going to pull up the tape, I think, but the PVA releases, and once I get this piece off without breaking the glass, one of the nice things you see is one side of it, the side against the glass is at least nice and smooth, nice and shiny, and actually, 
I'm going to leave this on here because we may want to make another piece of material a similar size. So there's no point in even taking this off. Although that PVA, only I would only trust it once. So what, what I got from this is now we've shown the saran wrap method to release a part and the PVA method, even though we used up, I think, 20-year-old PVA. Anyway, good information. But this is the, the best information of all is when you get the part off in one piece like this. The thing right now that's really, really important until I get this all trimmed out, these edges and all these little things are razor blades. Anywhere the resin picked up the carbon, there's millions of little porcupine needles there. So I've got to be really careful until I actually get this part trimmed out. But making material, when you can make your own material, what it allows you to do is make it as thick as you need it, as thin. Of course, you can put a smooth surface with PVA. Gives you a lot of choices. Now, I'm going to lay this hole. I see, I got to see what I'm trying to do here. And I may as well show this. This is, this is one of the things. I save up old tape. That's probably, I can't even tell how old some of this stuff is. But I save up old tape for doing jobs like this where I don't need to use it for paint edging or whatever. But anytime I'm using this and I want to use up old tape, see it always rips and it gets sticky and whatever. I want to cover the whole part. And I want it to be, I wanted to show this if I could. You gotta be, don't run your hand over it. Oh my God, you wind up with splinters. That was a little trick I used to use on this old tape. I'd hang it up by a heating vent before I'd try to pull it off. Whenever it has that tendency to tear like that, warming it up seems to help. Now the whole idea here is to we wanna lay these parts out. Here's, here's something every modeler in the world knows. If you make, if you were to trace these out, there's a potential you can make two right or two left because we want to use the side that's smooth, if possible, for the outer side. So to avoid that, I want to make sure that when I'm all done with this, when I'm done laying this out, I haven't done this. I haven't done two rights or two lefts. That's the reason for having them. Now I want to see, most of all, how I can lay these out efficiently. And it probably isn't going to be that big of a deal since we, and well, let's see. I'm guessing, well, I don't even have to worry about it because it's going to fit. See, I made the material plenty big, so let me just... So you wouldn't want to lay it out this way because the two ends are going to be in, a, in conflict. Okay, so if I lay this out... Now, a good trick that I've used for many, many years, as I always use a Sharpie marker when I'm going to cut something on a jigsaw because I want to leave the mark on. I want to cut in such a way that I leave this mark on. I'm going to sand and get it all trued in. I don't need to get a really true cut. What I need to do is leave myself a little bit of extra material. And once I cut these and drill them, I want to make sure I go out to the bike and there's no interference before I spend all the time putting the fit on. Now, to get that one that way, Let's just make sure we haven't done it. I've got to get that one that way. That means this one has to go this way. Am I doing this backwards? I want to see the blue side. And now I want to see that side. Okay, so that's the way that's going to work. We'll have a nice big chunk of material left over here, it looks like. Let's see how else I could do this. I'm just trying to just trying to use the material efficiently. Yeah, I guess we could do that. And we'll have a big chunk left over here. So that won't be a problem at all. Now the other thing, and because I'm shooting video and talking and yapping and making coffee and everything, I'm, I'm doing 10 things at once. See, it's not real important to get these shapes right right now. We're going to trude them up on a belt sander and get all the flats and everything. But what I do want to do is make sure that when I'm done, I know every every modeler in the world is laughing right now, knowing, yeah, you made two right fuselage sides or two left or whatever. And we have a big piece of scrap. I've got that extra little tang. I decided to leave that little tang on. So now, as funny as it may seem, we know we have a left side, a right side. I have the holes spotted accurately, and I have a pattern. Time to get out the saw and very carefully cut that out. But while I'm cutting it out, 
I'm going to try to leave on the whole Sharpie marker line. That's going to leave me enough material at the very end to take the edge and radius the edge off really nice. Put a nice, a nice edge on it just like on the R1 parts. Anytime you're doing anything with carbon fiber, you want to vacuum up the dust. And if you're not shooting video, wear a mask. That's for sure. And the most important thing at this point is I've left material on. Because now I can go over to the belt sander and I can sand off. Just get right up to where the lines get a flat, a flat. Before I start hand finishing this, get all these flats. They'll all come into a nice, nice straight linear thing with the belt sander. The next step is to drill the screw holes and I want to drill them accurately and one of the best ways to do this if if you're not really a uh, familiar with this is you would take one piece drill that hole then put this bolt in that hole go back to the drill press and drill this hole you would not just the one thing not to do is just go drill two holes then you put this piece on and they're off by a couple of thousands if you drill the first hole Put the bolt in and then drill the second hole. You almost always will have it very, very accurately. Now also, whenever you're drilling any carbon fiber parts, a step drill is a good idea because here's what happens. You drill a pilot hole and then this will open it up just one little bit at a time. And rather than if you put a full size drill in it, it's going to catch on the fibers. So Santa Claus is coming here into the shop while I'm doing heel guards. Look at this. This is one of the baby's Christmas presents. They turned my shop into Santa Claus's shop here. I'm not an elf. I'm a tough motorcycle rider. So now, if you see how this works, this is a press fit. A really tight fit on the bolt. It's Even though I have a mark there, it's going to allow me to get right, right on the money when I drill that hole. And so what I'll do is go over to the drill press with this bolt in place and drill that hole. And do the same thing obviously for the other part. And that should be two very accurate holes. You can see those bolts are very, very accurately centered. Everything is exactly how it should be. Just do the same thing to the other part. That is, that is really a really good trick. That's an old machine shop trick, and it works every time. And because the holes are real accurate, we'll get a nice look at what this part is going to look like. It's a little different than the stock part, but I want to see it in real life before I spend all the time putting any kind of finish on it. All right, so we did our test fit. Everything looks like it's going to be perfect. Time to put a finish on that. Well, let's see how we're going to do this. That's yet to be proven. Now, the issue is whether you have this part made out of metal or out of carbon fiber, the heel of your boot rubs here from time to time or when whatever. It just takes a beating is the bottom line. So I, I was hoping I would not have to put a paint finish on there. I could do it with the resin or just add some clear resin and then buff that. We're going to see. So now we know we have an accurate set of holes. The parts line up. Everything is ready. And now it's time to see how we're going to finish off the edges and the main part of this. Now the next step on this is really a couple of simple little things. This side is not, not as critical. This one, I have the bolt in place. And I want to absolutely true this radius up. Because this is something the bolt needs to be like a bullseye. If it's off to one side, your eye will pick it up right away. Little detail stuff that I think is important anyway. So just some good old fashioned industrial 180 sandpaper and a hard block. I want to get that shape in. I want to get this radius very similar. 
this one looks good. And up here, not critical. We can just kiss this. We don't have a rough edge or a point. And this is a critical, critical edge. When that part is out, and I'll just, I want to show this, and that bolt is in there. If that bolt isn't centered, your eye is going to pick it up right away. Using a hard block, I want to make a radius on this. I have, I'm leaving the tape on. I don't want to scratch this surface because I, I have an experiment that I want to do. Now this resin is a roughly 24 hours old. And I want to see if there's any chance at all that within 24 hours it reaches its maximum hardness. Because if it doesn't, for some reason, if I can't buff this out, at least polish it somewhat, then I'm going to put it up by the heating vent for a couple of days and then see if I can do it. So in essence, I'll, from this project, I'll learn something I didn't know before and I can pass that information on. Since I haven't done this yet with the 107, the 207, what the hell is it? 107, 207 hardener. I've used West resin before, but I've never tried to buff it out the next day. I always let it sit up by a heating vent. I don't need a fancy radius on this, just enough. I don't want to have a razor sharp edge. And you can see the difference. This is the side we didn't put against glass. Now, if I wanted to have that smooth surface on both sides, I could have put another piece of glass and a bunch of weights on top of it and squeezed it out. But you're really only going to see this one side anyway. Now, with the radius sanded, now I can just pull off the tape. So now this is the test. This is the finish that we have from the glass and it's 24 hours old so the test will be and what I'm trying to do is something that I like to do. I like to learn things and I like to learn them firsthand. I don't want to learn them from from somebody telling me uh, especially if I don't know what they're what they're talking about. They don't know what they're talking about. So what I'm going to do is with some 2000 grit paper just flatten this out and then see if is any chance at all this will buff out. I can do the edges, clean everything up, and this will be an interesting test. Now I'm using 2000 grit and I'm trying to give this a, as fair a shot as possible and if it doesn't work out, it, we have a lot of choices of course, but this is the kind of thing that you could get information from somebody who works in an 80 degree shop, a 70 degree shop, or the whatever, and your shop where it's cold here. Now, I, I tried to factor in one thing. It's cold in this house. So we keep it this way on purpose because basically we don't want to pay for more heat. But And it's expensive to keep it cold, believe me. So what happens is all resin, virtually all resin and virtually all paint that are two-part, what happens, and it may be an exception, I shouldn't say virtually, what happens is when, when it's cold, this paint would be the equivalent of maybe 12 hours in, in a, you know, a warmer weather climate, a colder weather. The warm is going to accelerate it. So I don't want to give up on this, and I don't want to give up on the fact that maybe I can buff this original coat out. Because in the end, I may have to just put another coat on it. Actually, just sand it out. It sanded out pretty flat. I'm really amazed and actually has a little bit of a gloss. But I have a feeling, and I was just thinking of how to do this test correctly. I have a feeling if it buffs out and it's really not that good, I'll just let it sit for a couple of days and come back and buff it again. And I bet it'll be a lot better. Now, because we're doing an experimental part, I thought, what do I have to lose here? I have 2,000 grit paper. And I never, I've never done this before, but I wanted to. I have the paper wet, of course. And this has, I don't know, 80 grit or something on it. And I thought, Let, let's just see. I don't want to get the 80 grit on there, but what happens is it holds it in place. Look at that. <laughs> How cool is that? It may save me some work. I don't know. I may have some way that I can 2,000 grit sand. Well, that looks like, that looks like something you'd want to put in the bank. Maybe I could patent this. <laughs> That's really funny. 
Doesn't seem to matter if you throw water on it because the sandpaper is holding the 2,000 grit. It looks like we might have stumbled upon something that's very, very useful. I guess we're going to find out. So the first thing I want to test, the, the age what the age old standard for CR8065. And needless to say, I don't know if this is going to be exactly what I what I want. But and I always get that feeling that if I let it dry a couple extra days, even a week, it'll just buff out easier. But let's see. And it, there's no harm in just experimenting, because either way, we're going to let it dry. Okay, so I see a problem already that I did not anticipate. And shame on me for not figuring this out. Here's the problem. Yeah, the, the material buffs out pretty good, but you can see the, the weave is coming through. So what that's telling me is I'm going to have to put another coat of resin on this. Otherwise, that, you, you can never buff out the weave, so that's pointless. So what I'm going to do with this now is re-sand it, get it clean, re-sand it, sand the other part, and set this up to put another coat of resin on. And that, I guess, is going to be the only game in town. So at least I learned. But I did learn it is buffing out, so I think the new resin that's going to be on top of this will buff out. I just think we don't have enough resin from because this part was squeegeed down by the glass. So... Anyway, I, that's, that's not a big deal. Now, however, if we work in the future to make this same part, I would put a coat of resin on the PVA. Let that dry. Put another coat of resin, let it dry. So that now we would have three coats of resin with a perfectly flat thing. And a lot of times when you're doing molding, you, you paint the mold, they actually, on some molds, some model airplane molds, they paint the mold and put the decals in and everything, and then put the, red, the, the carbon fiber or the e-glass in. So, okay, we learned for these two parts, and this one isn't even sanded yet, I'm going to have to re-sand them, and then mix up another little batch of resin and just get extra resin on this, and, and I'm going to let it dry then for a couple days. Now, using our good friend hot glue, don't need to make this real fancy. We just need a way of holding these parts. And this will be fine. This will be all we need while we can... Otherwise, how do you hold this when you're doing... <laughs> it, until you actually do something. Yeah, You're planning in your mind a certain thing and it's... It's a lot easier to make the plan and when you actually come up a, and do the part, you say, oh, oh I gotta hold that. So anyway, the hot glue is our friend. Recently anyway, we've been doing it with hot glue. CA would work. Anything that you can make a little a little thing to hold your parts. And now we just have to mix the resin and we'll be all set to put a coat of resin on these. Now we're just going to mix up a small amount and we'll be ready to put a coat on. Now I, I'm wondering if I'm going to be able to put one coat on, get it to kind of kick off, put another coat on. I'd like to have a lot of extra resin on there that I can block sand out. Now we'll see. And today is just a great day for learning things. We learned an awful lot about putting paint on carbon fiber. Now we have to learn about, and you would think, oh, well, you just go on the internet and find that out. Yeah, well, good luck with that. A little trick you can use is I put a, a Sharpie marker around when I'm mixing a small amount. Again, when you're mixing a small amount, it can be tricky. You don't want to get the ratios wrong. Just got to spend a little time getting it right. Uh, this will be an interesting thing because I really, this is something I have never done before. And see, here's the thing with the Huntsman resin like that uh, the mufflers are made out of. Here's the thing, that resin dries like glass. It's super hard. This is made, this is a laminating resin. I think it's, there's other properties it has, but I don't think it's, it's going to buff up. Maybe I'm wrong. It's not going to buff up as good as the Huntsman, but then it doesn't have to. It just has to be good enough that I don't want to have a flat black part on there. And I was thinking as a fallback, see, I'm always thinking about, I guess all rocket scientists always think this way. I'm always thinking, well, what if that doesn't work? What do I do next? Okay, the, the fallback to this would be 
to put on maybe 15 coats of paint and in the normal maintenance of the motorcycle every once in a while run the buffing wheel over it but I don't want to run out of paint but then even if I did that taking two screws off on each side and putting a fresh coat of paint on once every 10 years well who the hell knows how long I'm gonna live anyway I may be one coat of paint away from uh, <laughs> from the obituaries anyway we'll stir this up always stir it two minutes two minutes we're certainly going to see how this works but to me it's always it's always the most interesting part of anything I do from modeling motorcycles or working on my house or installing a toilet or whatever when I can invent something or something that I think is not common information you could just ask uh, Uncle Giuseppe and he'd tell you I like knowing that and I like even more being able to pass it on to my friends I feel like it's a little mitzvah if I can pass on useful information good information help people share their passion for whatever it is whether they're making golf clubs or a model railroad or or whatever we have a pretty good base of knowledge that we've learned over the years many years and well I'm wondering and I'll we'll see how this is going to lay down now I got to be careful I'm trying to break up any air bubbles that are in here because they're going to be little bits of imperfection when I go to buff it out so I'm going to be real real careful about drawing this coat of resin out we'll see how it works I may have to do this twice I may have to do it three times I don't know but I'm learning and I'm hoping from the learning I'll be able to pass that on to you now I know as an example to get rid of there's a couple little things good information that useful information when you stir the resin up of course it's a good idea not to turn it in with an egg beater and and you create all these bubbles but what happens sooner or later you, when you lay the resin out there'll be bubbles in it and what I do to, to try to minimize it is I'll babysit this part for 45 minutes every once in a while come back to it and do this just drag the brush across it first you try to pop these bubbles and what what seems not to work what makes it worse is when you heat the part with a hairdryer it seems like any air that's in there just seems to just blow up like a balloon so I'm gonna try to do just what I'm doing here I'm just dragging the weight of the brush across trying to get rid of any air bubbles and leave a really bubble free I'll talk to Midgley he had a great idea and I know they can do this with it they do the resin they take the resin and put a vacuum on it or uh, I, something he would know in his business I don't do it often enough that I remember but there is a way to minimize it but of course this is a way to minimize it too now here's another trick I just saw there's a hair in here now there isn't <laughs> these flux brushes are not really high quality but it doesn't really matter you can just go right back Now this would be way more difficult if you had a part that was shaped like a golf ball because you'd always be this because of the shape I can put it in this dimension it'll be a little bit easier to get rid of these air bubbles but, and I want to wipe around the edge again we got a 40, 45 minute window of being able to do this before this resin starts to kick off but we've learned a lot today today was a good day I always count a good day as if I when I go to sleep at night I know something I didn't know when I got up in the morning I always count that's a pretty good day and I have a feeling we've learned a little a little bit more about doing this type of part where we want to have a clear surface on it of course this is just one of many ways to do it but it's always good to know them all now after about a half an hour I can see we've got most of most of and I, it's the air bubbles I'm worried about getting this to get the brush marks out is not a big deal but I don't when you run into an air bubble what happens you have a flaw in the final finish so now it's just going to be a question of patience put let that dry overnight in fact I'm not even going to put it up by a heating vent because I'm afraid anything that's an air bubble with the heat it'll get bigger and bigger so just give that some dry time and that's basically all we're going to be able to get done today and the only downside to today was it never got warm enough to paint it never went anywhere near above freezing 
and I know when I paint in really freezing cold under under 32 degrees, it's a problem. So, and I'm, again, I always want to emphasize: never ever rush. At least I've found anytime I rush, nothing good happens. It's it's never a win-win. That's for sure. This little part needs touch-up. It's not going to happen today. But we did learn a lot about our composite with the West resin. And I think in the future we'll be able to make parts. Because there's going to be other carbon fiber parts. That's for we're not, we're not at the end of it. That's for sure. So every time we land, it's like a building block. We'll learn a little bit more. Hopefully be able to share it with you. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope your Christmas is as good as ours. And... Thanks for watching.